the local adventure playground where all the local kids come and play virtually every weeknight. About 18 months ago we decided that we needed something for children with additional needs because there was nothing like this in the area. Additional Needs Group is a session that children come to, age 5 to 16. Well, it's gone up to 25 now. And they come with their parents, so it's a bit like a stay and play, where they come and they join in and have a free play session for two hours. It's basically a group for children with special needs, and families and the siblings as well. Uh, they come run about, play, have a bit of fun, and parents get to offload on each other. It's, it's lovely, lovely little group, I love it. August 2012 we set it up and they came out. Supposedly we're going to just be initial six weeks for the, the, the big holidays in the summer. They came every week, one, one day a week for about two hours in the afternoon and they, they absolutely loved it so we decided from then onwards we would carry it on. A group of um, families with children with additional needs spoke out and said that there's no provision for their children. And we got told by a local representative that there were over 40 children registered on this estate with additional needs. So we thought maybe we could help because we had the provision. It would just match in the manpower and the skills to these families. We started off with just six parents and by the end of the summer holidays, we had 17 parents registered with their families. So the session grew week on week and obviously they were Families were telling their friends and more and more came. So by the end of the six week period, they actually wrote us a really lovely letter asking us to please carry on the provision. And they helped us look for funding as well. The families have led it from the beginning. They expressed the need for some provision for their families. And from there, it's evolved really from the parents starting it off. It just keeps developing and developing where they want to access more services other opportunities. They've got professionals coming in that come and help them write funding applications for equipment or trips or also help them with the benefits and any issues that they've got and they help them direct them to services that they can use which is something we couldn't offer, we didn't have them skills. Like that look, it makes a sandwich, doesn't it? And then you've got chocolate on the inside, isn't there? Yeah. No. Like... What's that? I don't know, it was supposed to be a smiley face, but I put some more things onto it and now it looks like a delicious biscuit. It's a lace, a white milk bottle, chocolate spread sandwich. Brilliant. Well done. And I'm going to eat it. Well then. <laughs> Why do you like coming here, Alanis? Because it's really fun. Why else? The children come with what they call hidden impairments. So that's things like autism, Asperger's, ADHD, things like that. It's not always physical disabilities that the children come with. We do have some children that come in a wheelchair. Hello! Well, we play out, we play in. And sometimes they have dinner. And something like that. And it's really fun here. Typically when a family's got children with additional needs, they're split up into different groups. So one set of the children might go to an after school club and the children with additional needs will go to a specific after school group where we encourage them to all come together and play as a family unit. So we'll have mum and dad come with the children with additional needs and also any brothers and sisters that they've got, which can range from zero up to 25. <laughs> They don't socialise kids like mine um, in, in school life or at home, but here they get to socialise a little bit more because there's understanding here, you know, they understand how, how each other is, so they get to socialise, they get to play on their own if they want. You get to socialise with other children <coughs> and play with them. And we play games. We play games, I mean, I like having fun. It hides your anger away, isn't it? Um, but for people in additional needs. It like um, people come here to uh, fight. People, uh, we go come here on a Thursday to um, just getting away from being at home, doing normal stuff like going on the computer. We play in the swings, we go down the snake, and we play over the woods and we play castles sometimes with our other friends. <laughs> so we run around and we play with our friends. It's basically called Daniel. It's basically called Run Riot Session, they come after school 
in the run round. Do like screaming and that. You doing all? There's not one of them the same. They're all unique. They can be all right one minute and then all upside down the next. You know, they can be coming really happy or sometimes they can come in and they don't want to be bothered with anybody and they just want to sit by themselves. Or they're angry or, you know what I mean? It's There's all different emotions in it. They can express themselves yeah. kind of in all different ways. Yeah. Some of the children cannot play unsupervised, my son especially. A lot of the children, when they get home from school, you can't just open the door and let them go out and play like you can with other children. So coming here, you can sit back and you can just let them have that little bit of independence and they can play in a positive way with other children. Uh, and they're benefiting that enormously from it. children have two hours where they can just be themselves, they don't have to perform, they don't have to be structured, they can act how they want really. That's why I think parents came up with Name Mum Riot. Make them trolls on the here. Make them maybe trolls here. <laughs> they have to be so structured at school and conform to what everyone thinks they should act like, but here they get opportunity to just be themselves. I've even got a little quote from a boy that says when he's at school he finds it quite strict but when he comes here he can just be himself. If you want you can go to the lab, you can go to the lab. When you've got a child with additional needs it's very easy to just sit at home and think you are the only one you know uh, uh, you get that you feel as though you've got a barrier and when you come here, you've got other parents what have got the additional needs as well. Uh, and you can sit and have a cup of tea and have a chat. Uh, other parents might have only just got a diagnosis for their children and the learning, like, you know, and we can say, well, you know, you bounce ideas off other, other parents, advise them, give them any tips. And it's just a way, you know, and you actually can see that you're not the only one what's got a child with special needs. There's other people out there as well. I would go insane if I didn't have the scope because it, it's nice. It's the only time I get to see other parents and, you know, sit and have a coffee with them because um, I do have a lot of children and... Uh, to take up all my time so it's nice to come and have a coffee and a bit of a chat and you know just uh, get, get stuff off my chest. We got given some funding to employ a support worker just to interact with the children and encourage positive play. We've obviously got volunteers as well we've got some young adults who volunteer and they come down every week and they help in the tuck shop play with the children uh, and that's how it runs really. It do, we do rely on volunteers because obviously we, we don't we haven't got money just ready available all the time. So why do you volunteer then Sophie? Just because it, it's like oh. a work placement and <laughs> getting ready for a bigger job, like a paid job. This is just the first step of it for me. It involves looking after the kids, playing with them and helping them when they need stuff to do like. <laughs> Stop it Thomas. <laughs> Telling them not to do stuff like I've just have and keeping them in order. Let that happens. Hey you! <laughs> I don't know what this is. Oh, no, I see. I know. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, what's this in this pot? Chocolate spread. I live on the estate, so I know most of the parents that come that are accessing Run Riot. It makes it easier to talk to them. Makes it easier to, you know, um, get involved with them. Really, Do you get a sense of what the kids are like and, and what mum and dad are like and other siblings that come with them. In November, the Warwick had actually funded um, Shelley's post and she's now the lead play worker on the Run Riot session. La, 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 la. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when, when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when you're at the yardies. I think it's having a really positive effect on the estate. It's obviously there was a need for it and now it's in place. They are real, you know, they're, they're attending, they're happy about it. They're always 
focusing, trying to push it on further. We've watched children develop when they come onto the session back in 2012 and how they were quite nervous and they didn't know what to expect and they come on now and the face is beaming when they walk on and they know exactly what to expect. They know they can basically do what they want for a couple of hours but they're also developing like their um, confidence has massively grown. Some of the children we've seen that won't come onto the playground then are walking around freely and will go on all the equipment without any qualms whatsoever. I see a positive environment, a safe environment and a happy environment. It brings out the best in the kids, it gives them free time and they enjoy it. There's nowhere else like this, it's unique. They run wild, they just like running, they're just like having the space to run around. Sadly, it's come to the end of the day and everybody's disappointed. Bye. See you later. Bye. See you later, Everybody's going now, except for the staff. Bye. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.